here we have the first print. Um, I have already figured out things I need to do to this to improve it. The main problem with this is that I need some uh, gaskets to seal it off. First of all I need one uh, gasket around this hole. Here is where the clay comes from the container uh, I, and I'm going to build an adapter piece here. So I need to place uh, an uh, o-ring gasket here over this hole. To do that I need to make a groove in the 3D print that is as big as the o-ring and the same on the piece that's going to clamp on here. On top of the piece here is where the screw is coming up, like so. I'm going to make an adapter plate here also, which bolts down and around the shaft. And I, of course, have to make an o-ring around this hole. And I'm also going to make room for two o-rings on top of this screw shaft, like so. These are going to be greased with some kind of grease or oil. And all of this is going to be held in place by an adapter piece that I'm bolting on top here with the holes for the stepper motor. The stepper motor, which we have here, is going to be attached by these uh, M3 threaded rods. The threaded rods are going in like this. They are going to go through the adapter piece on top and down through these holes like so. First I need to make the groove for this o-ring around this hole in the CAD software. So let's go on to the computer. Here we have the model. This is the piece I just printed uh, and this is the adapter piece. I also want this piece to be a bit bigger down this way. So let's do that first. I think we're putting it like this. Let's make a round off on this one. Okay, let's focus on making the groove for this o-ring. It's going to come between this body and this body. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to offset this sketch. There you see my new plane, so let's make a new sketch on this plane. I'm going to project this circle. That way I get this on my sketch. I can see the ends here. And the o-ring uh, has a diameter of 24.24. That's convenient. This is millimeter I'm talking about. So 24.24 divided by 2. Then I have the radius of 12.12. .12. On this sketch I will make a line from the center of the hole and put it 12.12 .12 millimeters out. That way I have a point here which is going to be the center of the o-ring. Now let's check the width. It's about 1.96. If I squeeze it a bit, it's about 1.8. So let's make it uh, 1.85. 1.85. This is the diameter of the o-ring. Now I can press finish sketch and I can revolve this circle around the center of this axis. I need to get a center point marked there, so... Um, okay, let's go into the sketch again. Uh, edit sketch. Just trying to make a line here. So, uh, <laughs> revolve this one around that axis. Yes. Okay, here as you can see, it wants to cut in the model. I have the diameter of the o-ring and the um, width of the o-ring here. Let's also put on the adapter body so it will get a cut also. Container connect. Now it should cut both of these bodies. Yeah, okay. Here I have a cutout for the o-ring and here is a cutout for the o-ring, yes. The next thing I have to make is the adapter plate on top of the extruder where I wanted the o-ring around the hole like so. Let's first make the adapter plate itself. I want it as a new component, new sketch. 
so this inner inner ring is this shaft on the screw uh, the outer ring you see here is this shaft after it has uh, expanded a bit so the o-rings are going to go around this top part of the shaft uh, and that is 7.9199 millimeters, 7.1 approximately. Uh, I want it to be a bit bigger because the 3D printer also shrinks this hole a bit. So if it's 7.1, I need to plus 0.3 millimeters, so 2, 3, and 4. So it's going to be this big the hole. And I also need the holes for the uh, M3 threaded rods, like so, and I need the rectangle on top. Or should I make it a round one? Yeah, I think so. Let's make it a circle that's going on top, like, like, <laughs> 49, yeah, like this. So then I want to finish this sketch and uh, extrude this part. Like so. I want it to be approximately, let's make it one and a half, also 15 millimeters. There we have the top adapter piece. Now I have to make the grooves for the O rings. So let's call this top adapter. Let's make a new sketch. on this axis that should be in the middle let's project this one and this shaft okay so first I'm going to make the o-ring in the top here let's measure the o-ring and the o-ring is uh, 16.4 center center so I will take 16.4 divided by 2, so the radius is 8.2. Let's make a line from the middle, 8.2, like so. I also will need to make a line straight up. Now let's measure the width of the O-ring. 2.5, if I press it a bit, it's 2.4. Let's make it 2.45 then. 2.45 millimeters. Let's finish this sketch. I have made the uh, slots for the O-rings in the top adapter. And the same slot is made on the main uh, body here. Now I'm making the slots for the O-rings that are going around the screw axle. And before that I just want to thread on this uh, O-ring that I'm going to use. Like so. Let's go inside the computer again here. Uh, uh, here is where I want the slots for the O-rings around the axle of the screw. So what I need to do now is to make a new sketch in the center plane. Again, I want to project the screw inner diameter of this shaft. That one onto the sketch, yes, there I have them. Now let's measure the o-ring on the screw. 9.5 is the center. 9.5 divided by 2 is 4.75. Let's make a line from center 4.75. And now let's measure the width of the o-ring. 1.85. 1.85. As you can see on the CAD drawing here now, you can see that the o-ring is going to go a little bit, I think I want it a bit more. Okay, let's let's go back. 475, uh, line, line, line. Let's make it at 4.7. And the circle was 1.85. Now it's a bit closer to the shaft. You can see that, that it goes a bit onto the screw. Um, I'm not sure if that is enough. Mm, I, want, I want it a bit closer. So uh, I, this one is going to go at 4.6, maybe at 4.5, yeah. Uh, and of course I have to have to make a center line here. Let's make that center line all the way down there. And I want to move this whole circle 
because I want it further down on the shaft let's try to copy paste no copy paste push it down yeah I can do it like that uh, because I also need two of these o-rings let's see I would like it to be to three millimeters from the top like so and I will make one more copy approximately three millimeters from the bottom okay here I have the two o-rings around the shaft of the screw let's turn off the screw I want to use the revolve command now uh, let's finish the sketch revolve this and this around the center axis oh yeah I'm going to push OK and there it's cut as you can see on analysis um, I have this edge here which can make it difficult to press in the o-ring so I'm going to use the fillet command and make a small adjustment on the end here I think that's enough OK and let's do the same on the bottom o-ring 2 millimeters woohoo no 0 0.2 millimeters yeah okay here we have the o-rings around the screw axle here we have the o-ring between the bottom and the top and here we have the o-ring around this shaft going down from the container now i just have to print this version also uh, and see how it works out Here you can see all my test prints to test sizes of holes, different layer heights, different materials. This is the final one and this is the final one. I have the screw I'm going to use here. I have a couple of different nozzles, different sizes. And I have this which is a top plate up on top here. Here I have different layer heights. I also have different percentage of infill and stuff like that. I tried to print in uh, PETG material it didn't work as good as I hoped uh, you can see there are holes and uh, it's not airtight at all and here we have the print I uh, chose to use this is airtight I used uh, a 0 0.1 millimeter layer height 0 0.4 nozzle but it's regular PLA material the stepper motor with the gear is going to go on top here and the shims between this top piece and the stepper motor is printing in the 3D printer as we speak. I will show you this later in this episode. The nozzle, which I can print in different sizes of holes, this is uh, 3mm. This piece is going to be bolted on on the side here. You see the four holes and you see the four holes here. And the clay uh, container itself is going to go on top of this like so. As I said, this is a prototype and I only want to get it working. So the first thing I have to do now is to adapt this screw so I can use it in the extruder. Now this should be able to go inside here and the nozzle should be able to go on top here
and the top piece should be able to go on, onto the axle like so and I should be able to turn the screw and I am able to turn the screw that's good the next thing to do now is cut off the top I'm going to use a flexi coupling like this the distance between the top piece and the stepper motor is going to be 41 millimeters so the flexi coupling is approximately here and I want to cut the axle there This side of the flexi coupling fits perfectly on the stepper motor, but the other side is way too small. I want this to fit inside the couple coupling, so I want this hole to be 7 millimeters. I will use a regular drill bit to get the 7 millimeters hole here. But first, I need to take out the set screws. As you see it doesn't fit exactly, so I need to grind down some of this. Okay, now that the screw is sorted, see here, I'm going to shift my attention to the fastening bolts for this part. I have this 4mm threaded rod, which I'm going to use in these holes. And I'm going to use some 4mm bolts inside here, and I'm going to fill this space with epoxy. I'm going to do this on all these four compartments. I can use some wing nuts on this side to fasten this part to this part. I will also need 4M4 nuts. I'm just fitting this now preliminary so I can put in the epoxy. I need an o-ring inside here, a big one. There we have the right size. There the o-ring is seated in its place. And I will bring this down. It fits very good. Okay, now it's ready for epoxy down in these holes. I'm just using this five minute epoxy. Just so I can turn this around, I need to attach a piece of wood. Now let's let this dry.
here I have all the bits and pieces I need to assemble the extruder. This is the main body of the extruder. This is the piece between the main body and the clay container, which goes on top here. This is the stepper motor, the coupling between the stepper motor and the screw, which goes here. Here I have a nozzle. This is a 4mm nozzle. I have different kinds of sizes, but the first one I'm going to try is this 4mm. This is an adapter plate going on top of the screw and the main body. These are the different O-rings I'm going to use. These are the distancing plates which is going on top of the top plate like so. And the stepper motor is going down here. Here are some wing nuts I'm going to use and some small bolts I'm going to use. This should be all I need. And this is some lubricant oil I'm going to use on the O-rings to get a tighter and a better seal. Okay, let's start the assembly of the extruder. Here I have the top part and uh, one o-ring that goes inside here. I have already put one o-ring. I don't know if you can see it, but it's inside here. I also have a room here for one more. These slots for the o-rings you can see on the CAD drawing. Here I'm just going to make a little oil bath. I'm just dipping the o-ring in the oil. It's a bit tricky getting it down there. I'm using this tool just to push it inside. There it is. I'm just going to put oil on this o-ring also. Okay, now we can put together the main body, the stepper motor. The stepper motor has a flat part on the axle, so be sure to get that on one of the one of the set screws. These are the distance uh, shims or what you want to call them. The next is the top adapter plate. It goes on top like so. Just putting a little bit of oil inside here also. This is the slot where this o-ring is going. I'm going to tighten it pretty good but uh, big, I have to be careful. not to destroy these uh, threads okay this uh, is a solid piece now the next thing I reckon is the screw you can see the screw protruding a little bit outside the main body here and this is correct as uh, the nozzle screw is going down uh, approximately this far and the screw is going inside this nozzle head and of course I also have an o-ring down here to tighten the seal between the screw and the main body getting a little bit of oil on this one also Now the next thing is to put on this uh, side adapter. This is to attach the clay container on top of this pipe. It's going inside these holes. And we also have an o-ring slot on both pieces here. Here's o-ring. Dipping it in some oil. Just going to check if the o-ring seats properly. And it does. And last but not least, the clay container is going on this pipe. Of course I have to fill this with uh, clay to test it. And I will do that in this video. Bear with me. But here it is. The whole extruder, 
I hope this works. <laughs> As I said before, I've never done this before and I hope it works. So I have made this test jig for the stepper motor. This is just a simple jig with uh, an Arduino Nano and uh, a 4988 stepper motor driver. One potentiometer to control the speed of the stepper motor and that's it. I would like the screw to go clockwise like so. I think that is the right direction to push the clay down and through the extruder hole. It looks like it's going the right way. And it's turning like it should. It sounds good. I can slow it way down. This is the slowest. <laughs> really nice. It's almost completely soundless. Uh, I like it very much. Very, very good. I also know that I need a plate on top here, just so that the compressed air pushes the clay evenly down inside this cylinder. And I found this uh, grinding disc, uh, which fits perfectly inside this cylinder. I'm just going to uh, put some uh, tape on it to seal off this hole. Like so. Now I'm putting the grinding disc on top here. I'm really excited about this, or nervous about this, I don't know. But there's just one thing to do, it's to test it and check if it works. I think I'm going to hook up the compressed air just to the container here and just see if it's even possible that the clay comes out this way. Okay, I'm turning on some air now. Whoa, I can see it coming. Oh, yeah. It works. <laughs> nice. Okay, now what's left to do is to hook up the extruder and the clay container and everything. I have made a jig I can put them in. This is the most awesome jig ever. And please don't mind all the mess around here, because I am a mid-project and uh, it's always this untidy when you're in the middle of a project. The air pressure. Here I have a relief valve. Uh, where I control the pressure, air pressure I'm sending up in top of the cylinder. You can see the air pressure here, where 0 0.2 micro pascal is the same as two bars. First I'm going to start the stepper motor and set a, a low speed on it. Then I'm going to increase the pressure. The clay is going to be get pushed down to the screw and I will get an even flow, I hope. I'm going to try this speed for now. Let's increase air pressure. I'm not sure how much I need, so... Try a bit more.
I have two bars now, 0.2 micropascals. Let's increase pressure. Three bars. Putting on some more pressure. Maybe I need some more speed. Oh, something is happening. There are clay. <laughs> clay is coming. I can't believe it's working. It's not fast, but it's working. I need to be able to turn the stepper motor faster. I don't think I need any more pressure. It's <laughs> cool. Okay, so there we have it. I reckon I am finished with this part of the series. Uh, I have built the extruder. I have function tested it. It's currently on here with uh, six bars of pressure and the screw is turning uh, approximately as fast as the stepper motor will allow it to go. And that is a bit of a problem because I think the flow is a bit slow. So I may need to change the stepper motor and the gear for the stepper motor just to get it to go faster. I have to check up this problem and just uh, figure out how fast the clay should be uh, squeezing out of the nozzle. Because now it's quite slow. But at least the function test is okay, there is no leaks. I don't hear any hissing sound from the air pressure. The clay is staying inside the extruder, it doesn't come out in between the parts and stuff like that. The screw turns okay, I can't hear any noises or sounds that shouldn't be there. That's it for this part of this series. In the next part and in the parts beyond I'm going to build the machine itself. I am going to do some more experiments on the extruder here just to get it to work uh, as I need it to work. So now when I turn off the camera I have to screw this apart again and I have to clean every part of it. That is the back side of clay uh, 3D printing. You have to clean the extruder uh, every time you use it. Or else uh, the clay will, uh, will harden and uh, things can get ruined. I hope you enjoyed this series and please subscribe to my channel, like this video, it helps a lot. If you want some uh, behind the scenes uh, info on this machine and other projects, I have an Instagram and Facebook page. I have never done this before. Come along me for the ride of building this. And until next time, goodbye.